What a great facility that mm -hmm. is. And, and Deb and David, I think what a lot of people don't understand and, and really are, are going to be amazed about is that that beautiful new Kayfords Foundation Arts Center is the former home of the giant bakery. People used to call it the <laughs> Heidi Bakery, a uh, very old <laughs> warehouse down in Silver Spring. It's been an exciting part of revitalizing Silver Spring to take a building like that and uh, do a torpedo factory style uh, redo. Uh, Deb, what, what are your thoughts on how that building is, is helping to transform the arts here at the college? I think that that building has single-handedly given Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus a stake in the arts because they had arts offerings for many years but in very small facilities, very inadequate. It was very hard to you know, attract students or make the program grow because you were just so limited by facilities. But with that building, not only does it give the Tacoma Park Silver Spring Art Department a beautiful place to work and a great place for students to study, as I mentioned before, we've also included the School of Art and Design in that building. And it also brings together the Arts Institute, which is in that building, with some community artist studios that'll be filled in the future so that the community can also enjoy the building. So it brings together lots of important energy in the arts mm -hmm. into one building on that campus, so it's going to make a huge difference. I want to turn to um, the idea of students taking the arts, and I think there are probably some students out there, maybe they're accounting majors or engineering majors, and they might be saying, well, why do I need to have an art or an arts class? What are your thoughts on that? I can give a couple of practical reasons and then really the best reason. <laughs> um, a couple of practical reasons are study after study has shown that um, arts education of different types really does develop your mental abilities in other disciplines. It's um, creative problem solving is taught in the arts and a lot of medical schools are now asking their um, med students to take drawing classes because wow. it's been shown to really improve their powers of observation. And so there, I mean, there are lots of things that, you know, when you're engaged with the arts and thinking about the arts and learning about the arts, it really helps you in other disciplines as well. But I think and probably a more important reason is it makes your life so much better. I mean, to have that contact with the arts and to, to have an appreciation for what you can learn from the arts and what it, what it does for you as a human being, I think students may not make that connection if they've never been exposed to the arts. And so I think it, it really sets students up um, to be lifelong um, arts patrons of, of some kind or another in a way that makes their lives better and, and makes them more well-rounded people. And, and I'm sorry, I cut After you off you, twice you today, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> David, you have some real life experience with this. Not only are you the director of the Arts Institute, but you are a musician in another part of your life. Can you talk a little bit about that and maybe your own experience with how those two things have overlapped? Well, I, I, uh, I have played the French horn since the sixth grade. Uh -huh. I, I do it less well now than I did <laughs> a few years ago, <laughs> but better than I did in the sixth grade, <laughs> <laughs> I hope. And, um, Coming up in a, in a minute, a performance. <laughs> <by> the <laughs> the We're going to prove that you're not correct about that. Uh, and, uh, and, and what I've seen in, in this lifelong experience uh, with the arts is that um, it raises people who are involved with the arts, myself, other people I've been with, it raises our, our understanding and our level of appreciation for things that might be a little more beautiful, a little more peaceful, a little more calming than the usual pop culture and we all know what that is and that <laughs> serves a purpose and many people are happy with that but I think that if you want to really have your society advance and have people appreciate one another's differences mm -hmm. and learn how to cooperate and learn how to think at a higher level and live at a more um, uh, social uh, with a more social purpose, that involvement in the arts uh, for all people helps make mm -hmm. our society more civil. Mm. All so that from the French horn. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it's time to go take a course right there. And Deb, I want to ask you, for students that are taking courses at Montgomery College, mm -hmm. and I think the both of you being fairly recent additions to Montgomery College in right. the last few years, you, like a lot of people, have to be surprised at the quality of the arts faculty that you would find at Montgomery College. I wonder if you could give us just a little bit of a sense of some of the faculty members that are part of the arts team. Yeah, it's, am it's amazing that 
you know, sometimes I think, wow, we have all these people here on our, our campus. For example, um, our chair of the music department, Jay Crowder, is a pianist who's won Helen Hayes Awards for his work in D.C. as a music director at various theaters. We have uh, in our art department, uh, Camelia O'Kim, who is um, a metal smither and jewelry maker, and she has shows literally all over the world. I mean, she is internationally known for her work. We have um, an actor in the school of, uh, in the speech dance theater department, Kenyatta Rogers, who is a professional actor in plays all the time in D.C. Students can take a class from him during the day and go see him in a show in a professional theater that evening and really find out what that's all about. And just in, and just in the area of the visual arts, and David, maybe you want to talk about this, there, there was an entire booklet and, and uh, exhibitions that were done showcasing the faculty talent across all the campuses. And I know you, ha you have some booklets, so hopefully if people want to get in touch with you, can they, can they get some information about the whole art faculty? Yes. Um, actually, I would like uh, people to get on to our email list, and it's not too hard. Arts Institute at Montgomery College dot edu, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll be happy to send brochures and booklets, uh, hard copies if requested, and uh, throughout the year we'll be able to send notices of the kinds of things that are happening here. Well, one of the things that's happening here this year is something called Rhythm and Blue, and I want it noted that I did not say blues. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, Rhythm and Blue, and I'll just hold this up for just a second to let you know that uh, uh, it's a, uh, the kind of a publication the Arts Institute does. Rhythm and Blue was uh, another of our uh, opportunities to unite the campuses around something. And so we convened faculty from Germantown, Rockville, Tacoma Park, Silver Spring. Every discipline. Every discipline mm -hmm. from all the campuses and talked about what can we do together next year, that being now, um, that will uh, let us work together around a theme. And so uh, we came up with uh, a topic that doesn't automatically answer all your questions, <laughs> rhythm and blue. So we have art shows and plays and concerts and, uh, and all kinds of activities that uh, have something to do with rhythm, something to do with something blue, something to do with patterns, or maybe something that's the opposite of those things. And as you can see, if uh, we have this wide array of events, and it includes a number of the activities in the World Arts Festival. Just one of many wonderful shows mm -hmm. at Montgomery College. David, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to get some final thoughts with our guests.